Welcome in the name of Christ. God's mercy, grace and peace be with you. And also Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We will begin with our first hymn, the first Noel, and I believe the wise men are going to arrive at the crib during this hymn as well.
Saviour Christ, saves to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. So let us turn to the light and confess our sins. You, Lord, were born for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came as Saviour to bring wholeness and peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came to bring light into the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and we came, Almighty God of the Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So that is O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. And in Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, reads, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, and it stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, 
they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, that's half the congregation, though. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it includes the person who's heard my Christmas joke. So um, I can tell it again. There are, I have occasionally, well, quite frequently remarked, three canonical Christmas stories. There's the story in the Gospel of Luke where we get shepherds and an angelic choir and an annunciation. There is the story in the Gospel of Matthew where we get Magi and King Herod and an annunciation. The annunciation to Matthew is to Joseph, the one in Luke, of course, is to Mary. And then there's the story which has the jolly innkeeper, the ox, the ass, the donkey, the kings and the camels. And that's the important one, because that's the one we all know. And there's a truth, I think, in all of them. So that, for instance, there is always some spoil sport who stands in the pulpit at Epiphany and says, they weren't three kings, they were magi, and goes on boringly to tell you what magi were. We think they might have been astrologer priests of the Zoroastrian faith, which was followed in Persia, or as it was called in those days, in Parthia. Probably so. And no, they weren't kings. Where did the kings come from? They came, I think, from Isaiah chapter 60. When Christians started looking back, they read in Isaiah that when the light of God would eventually come into the world, kings would come to the brightness of that dawning. And what did they find but Matthew telling us that people came from the east to the brightness of the dawning of Christ? Surely they must have been kings. And there is, I think, a sense in which they certainly represent kings. They represent the powers of the world. They are people who think that they are on the level of kingship. When they see a star, a conjunction, an astrological phenomenon, which makes them think a new king has been born in the West, they head to the palace to see Herod. We are here in the realm of high politics, of kings and princes and their attendants. And we're told that as they headed to Herod to look for the king where you don't expect to find a king, then of course in the other epiphany sermon you don't look for kings in the palaces if you're looking for the king of kings. They head to Herod and fear is the result. I rather like that. A king is being born. Panic. Because, of course, Herod and his advisors are thinking that if a rumour has got out that there's a pretender to the throne, there's a chance of rebellion, of insurrection, of civil war. Hence the small relative price of massacring the innocents of Bethlehem to stave off the possibility of much greater fear and violence. We are in the world of real politics the world in which we weigh evils against each other and discard those people who are simply in the way and of no consequence in the weight of the world. For it tells us that when God comes into the world, he comes as a person of no consequence. He comes as a person that the politicians of the day can discard. He comes as the person who is of no concern at all. One would, of course, no doubt pay lip service to that. I am here to protect the people, would say Herod, and disposing of some of the people is a way of protecting the rest. God comes into a world where human lives are weighed in the balance and often found to be trivial. And he comes as one of the trivial to stand alongside 
those who are weak, those who are marginalized, those who are disenfranchised. The Magi come from Parthia. That's another interesting thing. Parthia was the big empire which had grown up around the remnants of Alexander the Great's Persian area of influence. And the Romans were scared of Parthia. They had, for over several years, fought a series of wars against the Parthians, seeking to extend Roman influence to the east. And each time they had, as the Americans say, had their butts kicked. The Persians were fierce cavalrymen. They had amazing skills with the bow from the back of their horses. They could run rings quite literally around the Roman legions. And so Rome stormed in the Middle East. And Palestine, Israel, Judah found itself on the border with the empire that Rome so much feared. I think it's significant that Matthew tells us that these visitors came from the place that the Romans feared. The coming of Jesus was not a comfortable thing. It was not comfortable for the powers of Herod and Co. in Jerusalem. It was not comfortable for those who saw themselves as wrapped in the safety of the empire. And those who came to worship Jesus, his first worshippers, according to Matthew, came from the area that the Romans feared. They came from the area where threat lurked. I find something interesting in that. Who do we fear? What are we afraid of? If you're a reader of a certain tabloid paper, it could well be Muslims, immigrants, people like that. It's from the people you fear that God sends his messengers to speak a word saying, here is the light of the world. Here is the King of Kings. Do not be afraid. Look rather to those things that you see as a threat and ask what God is saying to you through them. The Magi come to bow down in homage to the one who is the King of Kings, the one who is born King of the Jews. And the other, and this is the third point, it's a three point service, so I'll stop in a minute. The final point I want to make is that these people had an expectation. A king had been born to the Jews, so they headed off to where you would look for a king. But when Herod said, no, no, it's not here, they didn't give up. They changed their ideas. And they went and they found a child in this little town of Bethlehem. And they were before that name. They were prepared to see that God wasn't coming to them in the way they had expected. They did not seek to bend him to their own preconceptions but were willing to look at what he had to say and bend to him. How often do we tend to miss what God says to us, what God is showing us, because he is not doing it in the way that we expect, in the way that we preordain. So here, this epiphany, let's remember these three things. That God comes to us not as the power but as the one who stands alongside the weak. That God comes to us often from the directions that we fear, challenging us to look again at those we would reject or hide from. That God comes to us not as we foresee, but as he in his grace chooses. And let us too be open to the possibility that God comes to us in unexpected ways and makes his glory manifest, shows himself to the world, which is, of course, the meaning of epiphany. So let's sing that thoroughly brilliant, if a biblical hymn, We Three Kings.
Lord of the new year, journey with us. How did the doctors and nurses on call at Arrow Park and Clatterbridge see the new year in? Apprehensive of increases in Omicron admissions and ever growing battles of delayed work. Let's have a moment to raise harassed, exhausted healthcare workers, GPs, paramedics. NHS administrators to God now. Lord of the new year, journey with, with us. us. by Master Car Park in Birkenhead, sitting in the cold, or selling Big Issue at Morrison's, or attending the food banks in New Brighton, seeing the new year. Let's spend a moment raising them and all who face fuel and food poverty this year to our Heavenly Father. Lord of the new year, journey with us. Amen. How did those in number 10 and 11 Downing Street and Windsor Castle see in the new year? Let's raise all those in places of power and authority to you, Almighty God.
Lord of the new year, journey with, with us. us. And in all these situations and struggles, joys and tribulations of the coming year, help us where we can be the answers, at least in part, to the prayers we pray. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth, and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. And he led me towards the hills, and the breaking of the day in the lone east. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior. The light of Christ has risen upon us with healing in his wings. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are, many. We are, we are one body, because we all share in the body. Draw near with faith, receive from him the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, be built in grace and in faith.
The light of Christ has done, dawned upon the world with healing for all humankind. And so may his blessing shine upon our lives and send us into the world in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.